problem of obesity or overweight, but we're also facing the other end of the spectrum, which is undernutrition. So malnutrition is basically both ends, which is your undernutrition and overnutrition. And it is, of course, stakeholders who are responsible, you know, to educate and, and increase awareness to help people understand what it is, you know, of how much they should eat, what they should eat. So that's where, um, you know, all the healthcare professionals need to come together and work in conjunction. So it's not just a nutritionist's job, like a doctor, you know, if they're seeing that their patient's nutrition, nutrient profile needs to improve, then of course they should recommend them to a qualified dietitian. And, you know, um, it's, it's all of these professionals that need to come together and work in conjunction so that the entire population, they are, they are more aware, they are empowered with more knowledge um, and they can make better decisions when it comes to food. And it's also important to help people understand the importance of macro and micronutrients and we'll be discussing this in detail as well. Okay, so coming to the first macronutrient that I'd like to talk about is protein, which is the elephant in the room. Now, the recommended intake of protein is about 0.8 to 1 gram per kg body weight per day. However, it is known that on average, people are just consuming 0.6 grams of protein per kg body weight per day, right? And uh, protein is something that is really lacking in, in our diets. So our diets are predominantly cereal-based and of course, cereals bring along a lot of carbohydrates with them. So let's say you tell me that, um, hey, Meghna, I've had, uh, you know, I eat dal chawal every day. And, um, you know, I don't think uh, I, I have an issue with, uh, you know, protein. I think I'm getting a good amount of protein with like a meal of dal chawal. But I would um, sort of contest that and say that, you know, your dal is in fact mostly 70 to 80 percent of it is composed of carbohydrate. And there's not enough protein that you're getting. Of course, not uh, trying to say that dal chawal isn't healthy. Of course, please go ahead and have it. It's a very nutritious and wholesome food. However, if you look at your protein intake the rest of the day also, um, we're not really getting in enough protein. And um, protein is very essential, right? So uh, how do you get protein? If you're a vegetarian um, or a vegan, you can get it from nuts and seeds. Pulses and beans are the top sources. Uh, and animal sources are your dairy, eggs, chicken, meat. Um, however, if um, you know if you're not getting enough, it is always good to consider taking a supplement as well. But of course, your first source should be from your diet. And then, if you feel that there is a lack, um, you know, of course, you can consult a nutritionist to get to know whether you really need a supplement as well. And yes, uh, coming to the importance of protein, it is important for building and maintaining your muscle mass. It is important for improving your insulin response, for your growth and development, and for your immunity. And every cell of your body requires protein. So it's not that um, you know you can just leave your protein um, and not look after your protein intake. It is very important. Even though you may not feel the immediate effects of not taking protein, but it does, the effects do compound over a period of time and, you know, you will notice that you are falling sick more often and um, you're not, uh, you know, you don't really have that glow, you're not really, your skin is not really good, your hair is falling and, you know, there's so many things that happen just by not taking enough protein. So, those are some of the very basic things I covered because, uh, so I said your hair falls. Now, uh, protein is something that, um, you know, your hair is something that um, is, you know, your body will supply it with, the, with nutrients in the least amount because it needs it for other processes as well in, you know, your liver and all the other organs. So if your hair is falling, that means it's like the last, um, you know, it's the first resort and you must like, it, these are all signs that your body notices when, you know, you're not having an adequate diet. Uh, when you're not having adequate protein in your diet. Okay, um, so that was about protein. Uh, coming to another nutrient that again, India is not taking enough of is omega-3. 
So here was a study done to check the omega-3 levels, which is particularly your EPA and DHA. So omega-3, we all must have faintly heard that omega-3 is important and it's good and you get these omega-3 supplements that uh, you, know, you might have considered taking. And um, so omega-3 is essentially of three types, which is your ALA, EPA, and DHA. Now, ALA you can get from um, any of your plant-based sources, which is your nuts and seeds. Uh, but the challenge is that for ALA to be converted into EPA and DHA, the other two forms, uh, your body can only convert about 9 to 10% of ALA into the other two forms. So it becomes very important, especially for vegetarians, for those who do not um, consume a lot of animal animal based sources or for that matter if you do not eat a lot of uh, fish or seafood so then it becomes very important to take a look at getting your omega-3 otherwise from a supplement now there are vegan supplements available as well um, and vegan and vegetarian supplements available as well but um, coming back to this so if you see this um, this chart here so there are so india so the, the countries highlighted in red are getting less than four percent um of you know the total fatty acids um that were extracted from their bloodstream so the countries in red and of course india is um highlighted here as well so we're not uh, so this is an emerging problem in india you know there, there needs to be a reference dietary intake established for getting enough of uh, omega-3 in the diet as well okay so this is again um, a potential health crisis Omega-3 is very important for your heart health. It helps lower inflammation. It is important for your brain function, for your eye health, for your skin and hair, and also for reducing preterm births. So again, um, it was also found that women uh, in India, uh, particularly pregnant women, are only getting up to 20 milligrams of uh, omega-3 in a day, which is quite low. And um, just correcting omega-3 is going to help with reducing the instances of these preterm births, right? So this is one um, nutrient of utmost importance that we are lacking in our diet.